my name is Annette and I'm an alto with the London Philharmonic Choir. Hi, I'm Olivia and I'm a soprano. And I'm Peter and I'm a tenor. So that leaves me, I'm Jeff, and I'm a bass. So we've got SATB. What more can we need? Do a little song now. <laughs> <laughs> You've all been in the choir longer than I have. So I wasn't part of the um, Arwen project that happened in the uh, British Museum. Now, so far, the concerts I've taken part in have all been in the Royal Festival Hall. So what was it like moving into the British Museum, which, of course, is not an acoustic people are familiar with? So I actually worked in the British Museum when I first moved to London. Um, I worked as a kind of gallery attendant. Um, so it was my job to tell people to keep quiet, but there was many a time I wanted to, you know, belt out <laughs> soppe or scale in that great hall, knowing how amazing the acoustics would be. So to get the chance to then sing, a kind of, you know, several years later was, you know, life goals achieved. Um, because, I mean, yeah, Paul really knew what he was writing for. But those kind of, you know, deliberate pauses he puts in and, um, you know, there's a, there's a part when it's kind of, uh, it all builds up and it, it kind of goes to uh, be strong and it's just this kind of yeah I think he said something that was like an eight second reverb or something and yeah. it was it was unbelievable <laughs> It was, I was, yeah, I felt very lucky to be a part of that one. Yeah. And Annette, you presumably went to the choir at the time? I was, and you know what, actually, for me, doing Arwen in the British Museum was coming back to it because my very first concert with the LPC was a Christmas carol concert in the British Museum, which was the first time we sang there. Um, that was when, when you guys travelled to Paris with the, with the Christmas oratory, um, but I just joined too late to be part of that. Um, so, so yeah, I'd sung in that acoustic before and it's just like, like you're saying, the sound just keeps coming back at you for, for however long. Um, and that piece works just perfectly in that space. Right. Well, that brings, I'm glad you, you talked about the space because it brings me to the point that we have just recorded it ourselves at home. Mm -hmm. Somewhat different to singing in an eight second acoustic. <laughs> yeah. so, um, Let's let's spend a little time talking about what it's like to take part in a virtual choir because we see so many of them on the internet at the moment because so many people feel this this need to sing. So mm. Olivia, would you like to say how you recorded it and how different it was? I mean, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't such a beautiful piece and something I really wanted to be a part of, I think I would have struggled to get it done. Um, I mean, yeah, going from the acoustics of the, the British Museum to my bedroom. <laughs> and I think also part of being a choir, you're so used to singing with other people and hearing other voices and hearing your voice blend with other voices. Um, so then to hear yourself singing with no accompaniment and kind of, um, I mean, it's great because we obviously had a kind of uh, clicker in our ear. Um, and I think it was the recorded piece um, that they recorded. Uh, but then also having to watch yourself sing as mm. well is, is, not, is not very pleasant because you're obviously watching your recording. Um, so yeah, I think there was about 50 takes before I was kind of like, ah, I'm just gonna send this one. <laughs> but I'm very, very excited to see how it's all gonna come together because yeah, it's just such a wonderful piece of music. Mm. And also it rings so true to kind of what is happening at the moment. I think there was a part where it kind of, um, where it's like earth be strong and I was singing it and I was like yes earth be strong we'll get through this pandemic we'll get past this kind of yeah. what's going on and yeah it was, it's um it was wonderful yeah and then a few um I mean I agree with everything Olivia you just said and I I had I had uh, obviously one one earphone in and I had it as loud as I could to just kind of simulate as much as possible <laughs> that you know I I want to do this with other people um but you know what took me by surprise almost was I've done I've done a few other virtual projects just out of desperation really. Um, but when I first got up the um, because we had a little video of Neville conducting with the sound, um, I had to close it down and come back to it because it was so emotional mm -hmm. to kind of have that in my living room and the memory of um, having done it live in in normal times. 
Um, and I thought, God, you know, this is going to be awful if, if now we can do this and I can't do it because I'm, it's, it's, it's too emotional. But then I came back to it and, um, yeah, and just pretended to, to um, you know, be in the British Museum, I think. Mm, I, think, I, think, I think what helps maybe as well is, again, that there's, there's clearly people at work uh, putting the projects together. So you, you're aware that something's happening that you yeah. can latch onto, which is good. And we've got a great platform, a great team and um, the leadership and, and, uh, and committee and things. But the, the fact that we know each other, I think helps. The fact that there's a chemistry that, that exists before and we kind of, yeah. we can bounce with each other and the, 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 there's an awareness. Um, because I think if you were doing it virtually and you didn't know anyone, <laughs> that would be a different experience. But the fact that it's the LPC and we know each other and the, with the familiar faces. And yeah, definitely. You want, you want the people and doing it together. A few of my friends who, who don't sing in choirs, when I said, God, I really miss it. They said, but you know, you can just sing along to something or can't you do something online? I said, yeah, we can. And I do all that, but it's just, it's just not the same. Yeah, and, and you're also passively or actively, you're learning something new. You're learning a new piece of music. You're actually changing, you know, you're adding to what you, what you, uh, what you knew before. And even if you're doing a new piece, you're still learning a new way of doing it or you're reminding yourself of it. So um, I know there's a, there's a former member who would talk about, um, he would say you, you were, quote, you were creating a little bit of magic for yourself and for the audience and you do that together. And I think there is something that, that happens in a performance and in rehearsal that's hard to put your finger on and it's hard to explain to someone who's not in a choir or an orchestra, but it's certainly there. Um, and it's one reason why I'm sure we'll all be back at the first rehearsal that exists um, that, that that church will be rammed. Well, thank you all for your time. And it's been great uh, meeting you on, online and let's hope it's not too far before we meet each other in real life. Thank you. Thank you.